Over the past few months, we've gone in depth on all of the necessary dietary minerals. Of course, there are various trace minerals as well as obvious ones we haven't covered, but the extent of what we need to be aware of is what the focus has been. Today, I'm going to summarize what foods you can include in your diet practically to minimize supplementation. One of the best ways to gauge your mineral status is with a hair mineral analysis. I made a video on this several months back, so before you jump into supplementing, isolating specific minerals, you might want to get that test. Otherwise, you're kind of shooting in the dark and most people miss a few important ones. I do have an affiliate link for evenbetternow.com. I don't really make that much money, guys, but it's better than nothing. Uh, so definitely check that out if you haven't gotten one. Guys, it was so little money. I still have the checks sitting on my uh, my desk over here. $21.03. So uh, don't by any means feel like you're helping me out by doing that. <laughs> now, I've separated this into minerals that you are likely deficient in, especially standard American dieters, versus minerals that are likely excessive. That means if you're able to incorporate enough of certain foods into your diet, it would correct those dietary mineral imbalances over a period of months to years. Initially, with any severe deficiency, you should probably be supplementing, and these foods really are to prevent the need to continually supplement. So hypothetically, if you're eating all these foods in adequate amounts, then you know, after you fix the deficiencies with supplements, you don't have to take the supplements anymore. And if you guys have watched my past videos, you will know that magnesium, molybdenum, manganese, iodine, zinc, copper, and selenium are inadequate on most diets, while phosphorus is iffy, sodium, potassium, calcium, and iron are almost always excessive. Ironically, the minerals that conventional dietary wisdom doctors and the media are telling you you need so much of. Starting with magnesium, chocolate and coconut milk are two sources that I would say are safe to incorporate into any diet on a frequent basis. And by that, I mean several times per week. And that's really the theme with all of these foods. I'm only recommending foods I would personally consume in the context of my liver damage. And I also mean organic for everything as conventional foods can have a lot of agrochemicals and negatives. Those foods aren't super realistic to consume large amounts of every day, and even so, it's probably not gonna be enough magnesium. You know, you can't wolf down two pounds of chocolate. So if you combine these with a transdermal magnesium spray and oral magnesium glycinate supplement, you can ensure you're getting enough of the mineral we need in most abundance, magnesium, and all that stuff, guys, is available on organsupplements.com for every single one of these. So brown rice has a decent amount of manganese, whole wheat, pasta, beans, pineapple are good. I think brown rice is really something you can have with virtually every meal. Beans a few times a week. Pineapple is a great fruit to have once or twice a week. Whole wheat pasta on occasions if you tolerate it, if it's from hard red winter wheat. So you really shouldn't have to supplement manganese with those foods in your diet. That's not the case with molybdenum, however. Certain beans, oats, and barley have a good amount, but those foods are high in certain anti-nutrients and tend to irritate people's stomachs, especially with compromised liver or digestive function. So it tends to be safer just to supplement molybdenum a few times a month and eat foods that agree with you better. Brazil nuts, beans, and oats are all excellent sources of selenium. And I think this is another mineral that you shouldn't have to supplement, and for good reason. It's very hard on your liver, even more so considering that typical selenium supplements are dosed too high. Iodine, very synergistic with selenium. Lean cod, navy beans, and white potatoes have pretty good amounts. And you know, I guess I wouldn't really consume cod too frequently, but it might be one of the lesser evils out of a lot of fish. With all the other halogens, fluoride, chlorine, etc., in our food and water supply, you probably need to supplement iodine anyway. Using iodine as a nasal rinse, hand wash, transdermally is usually plenty. And we have the iodine as well, guys. 
on organsupplements.com. Zinc might not be as big of an issue and you can't even make improvements if you wanted to because most of you guys are already eating plenty of meat, lean beef, lean pork, lean chicken, even oats have a decent amount of zinc. If you do have digestive issues, however, you might want to supplement because it might not be getting absorbed. See if you feel a little bit better. Copper, a bit trickier. You can only eat so much, you know, shiitake mushrooms, cashews, and chocolate. Copper can be supplemented if your liver is in good shape, but with high iron levels or any sort of digestive issue, copper should be supplemented in very small amounts. Meat also has plenty of phosphorus. I don't think this ever really has to be supplemented unless a person has an incredible excess of calcium and doesn't eat meat. Phosphorus is probably the only uh, one. I don't even know if supplements exist. I'm sure if you Googled it, it does, but I've never even looked into it. Just not necessary. On to the minerals you don't really have to alter your diet for. Just by adding salt to your food, you will get plenty of sodium. Potassium is inherent to any food you're eating. Meat, potatoes, even grains all have potassium in it. You'll get plenty through a whole foods diet. Because of dairy and supplements, almost everyone has too much calcium. Maybe if you were carnivore a few years without dairy, you should drink some mineral water, but it's unlikely. Meat is very high in iron, and because of fortified foods, copper deficiency, most people have too much iron stored in their liver in various tissue. In the case of someone with anemia, you really just want to increase your meat consumption, quality food intake, balance out your diet. Finishing off with sulfur, which I didn't put on there. I don't think anyone needs it, and sulfur should really be avoided considering how all of those minerals it's antagonistic against are typical deficiencies. If you're eating a lot of meat, you're gonna get plenty of sulfur. In my personal diet, I actually have cookies made with coconut milk, chocolate, and nut butter a few times a week, and that's actually an excellent way to add many minerals to a very tasty food. I alternate between brown rice, potatoes, and beans every week, so that knocks out a lot of other minerals. Plus, you know, eating lean red meat every day with all of my meals certainly gets the zinc and phosphorus. I do buy shiitake mushrooms in bulk once a month or so and then have them sauteed with my meat for that week. And the only mineral I probably don't get enough of in my diet is iodine, maybe molybdenum, but I use iodine so much for cleaning my face, brushing my teeth, that I'm sure my levels are more than adequate from the transdermal absorption. Uh, so thank you guys for joining me. If you have any questions about foods you eat or any more recommendations, please let me know down in the comments below. Again, if you go and watch those videos I made over the past few months on different minerals, you're going to see there's a lot more foods suggested than that, but these are the ones that I basically currently eat now and would eat, uh, just to clarify some stuff. So you guys can go to frank to check out all of my businesses and support me, including organsupplements.com, where we have these various mineral supplements. Outside of that, guys, please drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below, subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week, and be sure to check that notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos. Thanks again, guys, and I'll see you for tomorrow.